What's up, y'all? It's your boy Rampage. You know, we back with another episode of Fade on Sight. Me and Bear, we up in this bitch with a new guest, Jalen Turner. The, 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 what? The tarantula. The tarantula. The tarantula. Yeah. I see why they call you the tarantula. <laughs> you look like a black ass, burnt ass tarantula. Burnt? I don't know. About Man, you dog it. Come on, let's do it. Come on, we gotta do it. Come on. All right, all right, all right. That's love. That's love. That's love. You know, I don't care. I don't care what color, skin color you are. My son, the same skin color as you. That's right. Yeah, you know, I ain't racist. Yeah. Come on, bro. I, love, I love all peoples. <laughs> I already know. I already know. <laughs> but for real, though, how you get that name, Tarantula? Uh, I had a collection. I, I still got a collection of tarantulas, actually. You be kissing them motherfuckers, don't you? Nah. I, I, they stay away from my mouth. None of that. Nah, I don't do no. I'm I'm a little weird, but I ain't that weird. I'm just keep it honest. Yeah. How, how many transits you got? I got I got like 12, 13 right now. Who you live with? That you have? <laughs> you live by yourself? I live by myself. Uh, damn right. You gonna, you gonna say that? Like, <laughs> you don't got no girlfriend. Live with you? Nah. Uh, Real talk. Uh, I don't. Yeah, with 13 trans. I ain't surprised. Yeah, ain't that ain't an issue. I, with 13 13 I used to think that would be an issue, but it's definitely not an issue. Why Why, why isn't it an issue, though? They they going to come in the room regardless if I ask. Uh, so what, what, are they just, like, roaming around? No, nah, they they're, 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 they're locked ask. up in the container. You talk to them? Yeah, yeah I mean, a, a woman. Oh, well, I thought you were talking about the tarantulas. Yeah, no, nah, yeah, so yeah. you be locking women up in nah, the room? No, women yeah. come into my room, they go, oh, my gosh, they're going to come out. No, like, it's chill. So the transfers are in your room. In my room, yeah. You don't have like a designated area for them, man. You might in my need, room. <laughs> you might need to get them damn things their own room. Eventually, eventually, eventually. Yeah. yeah. I don't think I'm ever had that many to like to upscale it like that, but yeah. Yeah, well, that's good. But you're not talking to no girl. You're not got no serious woman right nah, now. Nah, not right now. Not right now. Uh, real talk. This is real. This is real straight up question though. Real talk. If you had a woman and you married her, would you let a dude with a 13 inch dick smash? Nah. For a million dollars. Nope. Two million dollars. No. You wouldn't you wouldn't pull an Adam Twin too? Negative. Three million dollars. No amount. It's a little of money. crazy. That's Bro. you? Hell you? no. <laughs> no? Hell no. I ain't had no dude no 13 inches. <laughs> hey, that, <that's> crazy. <laughs> the size don't matter. No other man is touching mine. No, no, nah, for real. For that's two, crazy. No, no, no. Real talk. <laughs> two or three million dollars. I let it like two or three inches. Smash <laughs> 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 a couple million, but not no 13. <laughs> That's gotta be the craziest thing I've ever heard, man. Hey, he different. Hey, yeah. but he probably got a check. They probably got a check. Oh yeah, they got they got a big check up. That's that's all anybody yeah. was talking about for a long time. So yeah, yeah. he did that for the check. He did for that sure. He yeah. did that for the check. Man, I can see you being the guy though that gets to go smash the dude's wife. If I had thirteen I inches, I'd be smashed. That. <laughs> I, be sm- I wouldn't be no fighter. I would. <laughs> now that you lean, you got a beard, you look good now. You kind of look like Michael B. Jordan God, when you walked look in. At him, look at yeah, him. I thought I, he was gonna be in Creed when you walked in because he walked in with that, you know, the attitude. Man, you know what? I would love to do a Creed movie. I would. I would that'd love. be lit. Yeah, that would yeah, be good. Yeah. Do you interested in doing any movies? I want to do it all, man. I want to. As soon as I'm making enough money to not fight, I'm not fighting. You, Plain what? and simple. For real, you just like, want you just want to use it as a platform to move on to your. For the most part, yeah, you know, I just got the goal be to become a champion. I feel like everything else I want in life is gonna happen after that, you know. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a good that's a good thing. That's you, a good thing. That's good because um, this sport, man, I wanted to retire at thirty five. I wanted to. That's why I said a long time ago, I said, man, I'm gonna retire at thirty five. But then I saw people retire and then coming back. I'm like, man, I don't want to miss it because it's like. It's a part of me. Once you once you fight for so long, it becomes a part of you, like who you who you are. You know. Yeah, that's that's. It's funny that you say that because I want to retire at thirty three, and you know I'm twenty eight now, and I'm like, dang, like I only got a few years left. I'm like, I might have to push it to, to thirty five, but uh, I feel you on that, man. Like people, like a lot of fighters get so caught up in it. Like that's all they know. That's their identity. But I also feel like I got so much things that I do outside of fighting that helps me. Realize that my whole identity doesn't rely around like fighting. Yeah, what else you be doing? What you have dog training and stuff like that. Are you good at training dogs? Yeah, okay. Mm. Okay. Are, are you training any of those tarantulas? Are they training? <laughs> nah, they're not trainable. Uh huh. You can't train them? Nah. Heck do they no. do they understand English? Can you tell them like get off my bed? Not at all. Oh, okay. <laughs> I ain't never. I, I think you're trying to spider. <laughs> nah, <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't never even got close to no tarantulas. I ain't I ain't really scared of them, but I don't really like spiders. See, if I knew, I would have brought one. You yeah, know? I would have nah, been cool. I, mean, I would have been cool. With I was walking at a weigh-in with one. Yeah, it was like on your shoulder. Yeah, it was that, in my hand. I, I put it. I had it in my hand, and you know, I stepped on the scale, and then they announced my name. I made weight, and then I opened up my hand. It was in my hand. Dude, that's what's up. Yeah, 
First, yeah. first fighter to ever do that. Yeah. Made history, right? Yeah, there. yeah, you made history. Ain't nobody gonna try to. <laughs> nah, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. <laughs> Yeah, That's no. crazy though. A lot of fighters do do make fighting their entire persona, their entire attitude in life. It's kind of like all they know. Yeah. How, how you how you get how do you get out of that? How do you think you get out of that? You just you just do a whole bunch of other stuff. Like me, I you know I started fighting at a different time. Back I started fighting King of the Cage back in the day. Nobody really was watching it mm-hmm. like that. Then I got my big break over in Japan, and you know I come back home and nobody knew who I was. So I could, I, I felt like I was Superman and Clark, Clark Kent, Kent. You know, people didn't know who I was, and I, and I didn't, I didn't really talk about it or nothing. I, I didn't. I only wore my chain when I had to to prom- promote myself back in those days. I used to go, I used to go everywhere with my chain on where, where I had to promote myself. Mm-hmm. But, you know, because back then you had to. It wasn't as known as, as it is these days. But I think that what helped me like make you know as much money as I did in the sport. Because when you fight, you do it for the love. But you know, saying so you got to make as much money as you, as you make, but you got to, you got to just do a whole lot of different other shit. You can't just put yourself in that box like I'm a fighter. You know, I, I got lucky with movies. I got injured like when I fought um, Shogun. He um, injured one of those muscles between my ribs, and I was out for a while. And, with what a kick? With a knee. A knee. Yeah, that's gonna hurt. Yeah, it was. It was, it was I ain't taking no knee from um, Shogun. Man, yeah, sure. I thought I thought my rib was poking out, right? But you know that was it was bad at the time. I shouldn't have even been fighting. I was I fought injured, but you know what I'm saying I needed the money. I was young. I, I used to make cash money in pride, and I put a lot of strippers through college. I'm telling you, <laughs> I made cash. Man, they give you they give you fucking ten thousand dollars stacks, and you know you sneak it back in the. And you you um <laughs> you pay your taxes and you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yo, pride, <laughs> you know, yeah. pride was the glory day. Yeah, it was the glory day. So yeah, so I I said, man, you know, I don't want to miss this money. I need this money. I need that, you know, that big water cash. So so I, I fought anyway, injured and and I, I thought I was gonna like start slow in the first round, ten minutes, but now he jumped on me. But anyway, I was laid up for a while and I couldn't train, I couldn't do nothing. And this one guy, um, he's a Brazilian guy, matter of fact. Uh, Federico Lapenda, he 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 used to um, manage a lot of old school fights. Some of the pioneers. He was like, "Hey, Rampage, you want to come do a movie?" I'm like, "Okay, I'm just hitting up, just good enough. I can move around stuff." So I did a movie, and uh, I was just supposed to be like an extra, but he threw me in there. That's right. So that's you know that's that's yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, talk about injured and and fight purses and money. Obviously, you just came off a crazy fight with Hooker. You fought you know, a hooker? You know. Dan Hooker. Dan Hooker. Oh, oh, <laughs> Not hooker. I was going like, oh, like, what? We, we were looking at that fight. Obviously, there was a lot that went into that. Like, it kind of explain that a little bit for people that don't know what it actually takes to fight and cut weight and kind of be, you know, an elite athlete. Man, it, it takes full life of dedication to get to that point. And, sure, that fight was hectic. That fight was crazy. That fight, uh, that fight taught me a lot about myself, you know. I was going through a lot of... Uh, behind the scenes, mental adversity and, you know, like personal stuff. And I still like, you know, I'm, I'm proud of my performance. You know, I'm proud of seeing that I um, overcame a lot of mental aspects of the game. You know what I mean? Uh, mental adversity. And it made me feel good. You know what I mean? Yeah. It made me feel good. Like, I don't care if I, got, I didn't get my hand raised. You yeah. Know? Like, it was, it was a battle, you know. And I just feel like I'm still young in the sport, so I'm learning as I go. And... You know, it is what it is. Like, we'll probably run it back again if he stays. Hey, you, you win some and you lose some in this sport. I, I wish the American fans were more like the Japanese fans because I actually did see that fight, and it was it was an exciting fight, and it was entertaining. So when I try to watch fights, I try to watch them as a fan, you know. And as a fan, I was entertained. And, you know, I was rooting for you because I know you and I met you before. And so I was rooting for you. But And uh, so you 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 a little bit more in, Invested in the fight in the last round, I was like, oh, you know, I just needed you to do a little bit more. But at the end of the day, I was like, oh, you know, it was it was an entertaining fight. But then I found out that you broke dude's face and his arm. Yeah, <laughs> that's the craziest thing. How you break a dude's arm? Like e- even right here, Rampage. Like look look at this dude, kind of throwing. I mean, he's you're destroying this guy in the first round. Like the dude's got to be a zombie at this point. He's on something. I don't know how he's walking after this. You threw so much at him. The guy's face was like. You know, obviously he he's a tough dude, right? Sure. And obviously he has you know some some good skin. But what you threw at him was insane. It's the blonde hair, man. I'm telling you, fighters over thirty get that blonde hair and they turn super saiyan. That's what it is. 
Man, you got to be tough if you're going if if you're a hooker. <laughs> and hookers are tough. But look here, though. I, I'm gonna say this one thing. I hate to say this, but I think that you should look at um, John Jones the way the way he fights because you're tall. You 155 er Yeah. Man, you tall for one. You you six one. Six three. You taller than me. I was a two oh five in the heavyweight. God damn. <laughs> yeah, you you should you should look at John Jones style just a little bit. I'm not saying copy off him and stuff like that, but um when I watch your fight, I wish you would have used your your range a little bit more, your your length. You yeah. Know? You know, mm. I'm sure your coaches mm. probably told you that. I don't I don't know your coaches. I don't know who maybe I do, do I know your coaches? I don't know. And tell your coach, they can kiss my ass, they get mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um No, I like that. Give it to him. I like that. Yeah, I just keep it real, you know. You know, because uh, I like it. You're a positive young man and stuff like that. You, I think you should look at John Jones because he, he's one of the best to, to know how to use his range. He, he gave me a hard time. And I have a hard time with long people with long limbs, long arms, long legs and stuff like that. So just just watch him, uh, a few things that he do and uh, and just just do it in, in sparring and, you know, once you learn it and see if that works for you. Yeah. You know, don't don't just do it. Go yeah. do it in a fight. Go yeah. do it and, and sparring. Make it work first and then go. Yeah. Yeah. I, I appreciate that. Oh, no so, problem. Yeah. yeah. You you practice a lot of the technique, like when you're working on technique. Does it really matter what type of sparring partner you have to practice that technique going yeah. into a fight? Yeah, it it does really, huh? You got to have like some good sparring partners. Yeah. If they, you African now? I see no. you got flies on your eyeballs. This fly shit. over here fighting me, bro. Like, if he wants some smoke. He wants to yeah. feed him to your tarantula. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Give him a little something. Knock him out. What your do your tarantulas eat flies? <laughs> what they eat? They eat like uh, they vegan? <laughs> nah, they eat crickets, roaches, lizards, anything they can overpower. Shit, they eat roaches. I needed some trans <laughs> when I was Get a that. kid. Get that thing cleaned up. <laughs> yeah, I, but like going into a sparring partner, like you know, you were going into the fight. Do you have to go get someone that fights like Hooker, like someone that's just made of steel that you can hit with a, a snow truck and he's still gonna keep moving? Honestly, dude, like. I fought some tough fools. I didn't think he was going to be that tough. You know what I mean? Like, Jamie Malarkey was probably the toughest fighter I fought up until mm-hmm. I fought Hooker. You know, because I hit Jamie with everything. And he kept coming, too. I was like, what's going on? Like, these, uh, where, where are they from? The uh, Aznax, uh, Kiwi dudes? Mm-hmm. They the the, the Hooker kept coming, too, didn't Kept coming. I was like, what? They know how to get their money. <laughs> man, I mean, you, you kicked him so hard, I felt it through the screen. I was like, there's no way he's walking out. I've seen you train during the week. Like, he kicks hard. Yeah. This dude has a weapon on him. And I was like, how's he still standing? Man, when I, when I set the kick up, because I was, I was attacking the body a lot. And I just remember, like, oh, he bit on something like, like went, that went low. I was like, oh, I'm going to go up high. And as soon as I went up high, boom, I landed it flush. And I, was, and, like, I just see him, like, kind of go like this. And he grabs me. I was like, all right. Or, like, he grabs me. And I, was just, I just remember, like, throwing a couple elbows or something and, like, hitting him. And I was like, all right, he's going to be done. And then, like, nah, he wasn't done. And I was like, this is crazy. Yeah. What's, that, what's that do to your mental in the middle of a fight? Honestly, nothing. Like, it didn't really affect me too much. I was just like, wow, this dude's still here. I was like, okay. If I, I feel like a fight is 95% mental. And, you know, that's my own personal opinion. And, you know, so maybe he he had something in his mind. Like, say, you, you was going through, like, um personal problems and stuff like that. And maybe his mind was in a, in a different place. Yeah, I, I definitely, in retrospect, I definitely feel like that. Like, he was definitely more mentally vested than I was. Like, I feel like, uh, you know, his experience and being in there, like, that, that's what played a big a big role in him getting that, that win, you know. He did more to win than I did. And it How was your cardio? Hurt. Did you get tired? Did you feel winded? It was, it was a weight cut. Oh, it was a weight cut. The weight cut was horrible. Yeah, what, what, how much weight did you cut? Where did you come from, if you don't mind me asking? From the start of camp? No, how much weight did you have to cut? Like cut, like that week? Yeah. Um, Shoot, I was only like, maybe like 17 pounds. 20 that's pounds. A, bro, that's a, uh, that week. Yeah. How much did you cut the day before? I got down to, I got down to 160. Only cut four pounds. Oh, okay, okay. But the so, week, but that week was hard. 17 pounds that week, yeah. That, that week... I got down to like 70 and I was chilling from there. I got down to 70 chilling. And then the night before uh, weigh-ins, Thursday night, we start cutting and I, I cut for like an hour. I lose four pounds. So I get down to 160. 
And did that. I was like, all right, we're chilling. And a uh, Volks team came in to the PI. So they had to, like, move us out because Hooker was going to be there. So that's what really, like, messed up my cut time. And they tried to put me in another room, put me in this uh, little sauna. And I was like, all right, whatever. Like, I'm going to just try to try to do the sauna but, thing. But how's that fair? You was there first, though. Teach me this. I don't know. I don't, I don't understand. Just, I've never been there to I the don't know. Just, just the schedule, I guess. Oh, it's the schedule. And yeah. you have so much time? Yeah. Oh, okay. So I was like, whatever. Like, I'll just, like, I'm thinking I'm good. I'm like, all right, whatever. Like, I'm going to just cut in the morning, you know, do the whole same process. And it's going to come off. Boom. Easy. Four pounds. Easy. Um, that wasn't the case, bro. I mm. wake up, get to the PI at 640, start cutting from there. We cut for like an hour and a half. The whole same routine I did the night before. And I only lost like eight ounces. Mm -hmm. I was like, I yeah, was your like, body's locked up, huh? Yep. I was like, there's no way. I freaked out. I was like, yo, this is crazy. Did you do a cold plunge? Mm -mm. Next time your body lock up, try to do a cold plunge, then then hot, then cold. Cause um, when I fought Sakuraba, they they did it last minute. Told me I had to cut weight, and they wanted me to do it the day of the fight. I'm like, no, nah, hell no. Nah. But they told me last minute, and I had to cut like thirty pounds, Shh, and then my body locked up. But I went from cold to hot, cold to hot, cold to hot. And I got some more weight off. Yeah. Next time, just try it. See if it works for you. Cause everybody is different. Yeah. Yeah, cause that that was that was nuts. I was I was rough. Like everybody at the PLs watched me. Like I was like, yo, like I'm trying. Like I'm in there pushing. Mm -hmm. Like I was like, it's just not coming off. Like I don't know what to do. So, but what what did you start? What what did you walk around there before your camp? Right, right before your camp. Yeah, I know your first day at camp, you weighed yourself. Sure. What was that weight? Man, this is this is the biggest I ever been. So for the record, I was. When I left to Dubai, two hundred five. No, 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 no. When I left to Dubai, I was like, I was like one ninety three. But that was after dinner. I had eight. I ate a bunch the night before. I was like one eighty seven before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why you don't go one seventies? Are, are you? Because, because when I'm in camp, my weight flies off. Oh. Um, you know, I I just lean down so easily. I like in camp, I walk around like one seventy seven. Oh you yeah, know? you don't want to fight if you walk around like yeah. Yeah, in a camp. Like, with I'm, I'm chilling like when I got back to when I got literally when, like one week in Dubai I lost 10 pounds second week I lost another 10 I was like 175 I was just cruising at 175 out there you know and came back went up a little bit more like food like I feel like the like the food difference like messed up my body and yeah like I, I got a little heavier started walking around like 177 180 and then I cut down again and that was it just it like that. I've been I've been thinking about this because my son fights at 155, but he, you know, he was amateur. His all his amateur fights was at 170, except for the last one. Mm -hmm. I made him do one one fight at 155 before he went pro. And um, I was thinking, man, I, I wish that was like 165. Mm -hmm. Perfect. I, Me too. I, I think that's that a nice should weight be. Class. Yeah, I think that'd be. I, I think that should be a 165. Like Tito Ortiz, he the one who made 205. How come somebody can't come around and make a 165? Somebody got that much pull. Who, who, who's famous enough in MMA right now that can make a and make the UFC or make somebody demand to make a 165? I mean, there, there's a class. couple of guys. I mean, 65 is a nice weight class though, because a lot of people can kind of cruise up and cruise down and make yeah. those fights interesting. Right now, there's not a lot of interesting fights if they don't have these super fights because exactly. everybody's kind of staying in their in their own worlds. Yeah, yeah 65 would be perfect because I feel like I'm too small for 170. Like I like I train with Lorenz Larkin on a regular basis. Dude would be like two ten, two fifteen. Yeah. I'm like, bro, like I'm not about to grapple with somebody that heavy, like fight night when I'm only gonna put on like seven ten pounds, like cutting up one. Yeah, but the problem with that is some of the seventy pounders are gonna come down to sixty five though. That too, but I feel like you know even if they do lose that extra five, extra five gonna hurt. They're gonna mm -hmm. hurt them. Huh? Yeah, it's kind of like how you felt. Mm -hmm. yep. So I, I I I know I know that the feeling when you had to lose a lot of weight in in, in, a, in a fight. And you know, the most I had to lose, like I was saying, that Sakuraba fight, and and you know, that fight was ten minutes, the first round ten minutes, right at the five minute mark. I, you know, I lost. It's just something. It's just your body depletes. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You just can't explain it, right? It's like you just don't. You just don't have all the all the energy that you need. So I, I understand now. I understand why you look like that, in like the um, in a you know, like the third round. I was like, oh, I was in the best shape of my life before that fight. Like I, I was running miles, sprints, grappling. Like I was on point. Like I was so sharp before, and then just that weight cut, man. It really, it really affected me. Like it, it affected everything, dude. It was crazy. I ain't been affected like that ever. You know. You, you learned something though, right? I you, learned. You I want, learned. You want to have When's your next fight? You know. 
No, nah, I'm not even thinking about another fight right now. You just want to chill? Just, what are you going to do? Chill. I'm probably just going to chill for the rest of the year. Probably do a, do a fight maybe like January or February next year. Hmm. But yeah, I, like I said, I got I to gotta handle a bunch of other stuff before I even think about fighting again. I want to fight, though. Shoot, I want to fight again so bad, but I'm like, nah, it's not smart. Man, come back stronger. Yeah. You got no injuries. You're like, you did. Yeah. That's crazy, actually, because it, I went into a war and every other fight. Like, the last five, six fights, I've had an injury after. That tripped me out. I'm like, how does this make sense? I'm like, is this a sign that I need to fight again right away, or is this a sign that I need to chill? Because every other fight, like, I fought, I fought Gamera. I had, a, I had a, a fracture in my leg or in my knee. Um, I fought Brad. I tore my tricep tendon and had bone fragments in my elbow. Um, when I fought, uh, what's the fuck, man? Um, in the Indian Native American dude, I tore my hip, I tore muscle and tendons on my hip, bro. Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, I've been injured after every fight. Like, it's the first time I haven't. I'm just, I'm thankful. It's crazy. So yeah. go, going into this year, obviously guys like Charles and Poirier and, you know, Gagey, all these dudes, you know, they are sitting pretty high up on the rankings. And you're kind of looking at the year and looking at where you're placing now and kind of what's next for you. How do you kind of psychologically get yourself to the, to the place you need to be, to the, to the, same mentality that you had to go in against those guys. And that's, that mentality hasn't gone anywhere. <laughs> it's still there. there. Yeah, I just, just got to get everything else right, you know, all the outside factors, little, you know, the little tweaks and nooks and crannies. I just need to clear all that up and I'll be good. And I'm still, I'm still on the way to the top. You mm-hmm. know? Like nothing, nothing mm-hmm. sidetracked me. I just learned something. That's it. Yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a good positive yeah. way to, you know, look at it. Yeah, I mean, Islam and Charles, obviously, you know, they need to get a battle going and kind of see what happens there. And the rankings are a little bit unique. but And even with that, you know what I mean? Like, a lot of the stuff is going to, like, get fanned out anyway, you know? Let the division keep flourishing, see who comes up, who comes down. And then, you know, I'm going to come back in and still somebody's hype. Yeah, I like that. You going to stay in the gym in, in the meantime? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'll probably get back in the gym, like, next week. You know, take another week off and just kick it. But I'm always in the gym. I'm like, I'm, I don't ever stay too far yeah. out of shape or too far away from the gym. What, what's the name of your, your crew, your gym? What, what are you training in? Shoot, man, I don't even know, bro. I'm bouncing around all over. Right? Oh, that's... I was, I, was, I was training at Ruka. Okay. And then I got my other coach, uh, Ozzy's out in uh, New Jersey. So I was training with him. And then I was training at Millennia. I'm just everywhere, bro. I feel you. Yeah. I feel you. You're like a lone wolf. Lone wolf. We gotta, yeah. we gotta get you a headquarters. You need a stable place. Yeah, you, yeah. Need, a, you need a stable place, stable coach. So you don't have a stable coach? You, you... Anthony Gonzalez. Who? Anthony Gonzalez. Uh-huh. Yeah, he's he's my. Man, you ought to hit up John Jones and see if you can come train with I him. I trained with him. I trained with him, shoot, like six, seven years ago. Oh, for real? Yeah. How was that? It was fun. It was, it was real fun. It was before I even went pro, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got an old little picture of me. Oh, for real? Yeah, John's he, cool. He's cool. You sparred him? Yeah. Yeah, it was did, fine. Did he, did he um, ask you to do some coke after the training? And stuff? <laughs> <laughs> nah, He's like, come on, let's make you stronger, boy. <laughs> no, nah, no. There was none of that. No, <laughs> man. He was, yeah. it was a good influence. It was a good yeah, influence. Going, yeah. going into this fight, you know, obviously, I appreciate you coming so soon. And Rampage was talking about you. We were watching your fight, and it was just a brutal war. But we saw you training with, you know, Cos. Con Bond and we saw you in Dubai. I think you were in Dubai. Yeah. Like, what, what's the energy you get from a guy like that going in this fight? Do you think it takes away from kind of like the systems you already had in place? You you learning too much extra? Do you think that that kind of flaws the technique a little nah, bit? Nah, 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 not at all. That was actually a good experience for me because, like, like I'm saying, like I train like all over. Like I don't have a set place to train, and like a lot of the places I train at, you know, I excel. Like I'm. I'm not saying like I'm the best guy in the room, but I don't get like like pushed like that. Like he pushed me like really like really well. Like I was like, dang, like this, it, it impressed Comes me. That's the real deal. Yeah, yeah, he's he's pretty legit, you know. So you I think he's pound for pound me. the best. You can't be pound for pound the best until you know you 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 make that run. But um, he's 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 a runner up yeah. for sure. I just want to tell up. you one thing about what you're doing, training with a lot of different people. You know, MMA is a small world, and there's no loyalty. So you train with people and stuff like that, and then you got to fight right. somebody. They're going, they're going. Just, just. I, I done been through that already. Yeah. I already, I already know the game. You already know. Huh? Yeah, yeah. you put it's in the game. That's like the OG putting the young G on game. I yeah. like that. Yeah, they're going, they're going, they're going to talk about. You think they will? They do it all the time. Really? All the time. Oh, yeah, all the time. Really? Yeah. They are giving technique out. They give. They tell. Wow. That's that's why. That's, shady. I, that's why I didn't really train with a lot of people, but um, but sometimes it, it works in your favor. When I fought Dan Henderson, 
uh, I was uh, training with Mayhem, Mayhem Miller for years. And he was on my team. We was our team punishment, helping Tito out, right? And then I don't know what happened, but uh, me and Mayhem, we never fell out. He went to go train with Dan Henderson. He was training with Dan Henderson sometimes. I used to go and help Dan Henderson train. And uh, Matt Lennon was there, I ended up fighting him. But anyway, when I fight Dan Henderson, he's fighting me on the ground the same way Mayhem does. And I was like, I've seen this before. And he was doing the same stuff that Mayhem was doing, but he's not as good as Mayhem at doing it. So they helped me out. So yep. I was like, oh, I see him. Oh, that's, that's good. So I'm sure Mayhem told him like what he does that, to beat me. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm not a jiu-jitsu guy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I know jiu-jitsu, but I just, I just don't show it in my fights. Yeah. But I know, but I know jiu-jitsu because you have to know it. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? You have to know it. So yeah. it, it, it works in your favor sometimes, but sometimes the people just be knowing, they just be yeah. talking. And, and that's like another reason why I've kind of deterred from like having like a main stable gym that has like a lot of fighters circling in and out. Like because of that, like I'm like, I know I'm going to cross paths with one of these guys eventually. You know what I mean? If, they got, I, that's one thing I don't do. I don't train with people Your weight in class. my weight class. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's smart. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's like the, that's like, at least a good rule to have. Yeah, yeah. that's a good rule. Because yeah. like the people I have trained with, like like RDA, like I'm I wouldn't fight him. You Who's know? RDA? Dos Anjos. Ariel Dos Anjos. Who's that one? Uh, former lightweight champion. Uh, he he's trained with Perillo. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah, like we like I've helped him for like nasty a few a few training camps. You know, so I'm like I wouldn't even I wouldn't even want to fight him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, that's how I, my loyalty runs, you know? And, like, I, I, I believe he feels the same way. Yeah. But, like, you know, going to another gym and being like, oh, they got all these 55ers, you know, I got to – even even if I do train with them, like, I got to go, like, make a statement if I go train with them. That's my like, – that's yeah. Yeah. my idealism behind it. So I'd rather, like, you know, I'll just try to focus on myself, do my own thing. And, like, so you never had to fight one of your friends? No. Nah. I had, I've had to do that a couple of times. Who? Um, Kevin Randleman. Oh, sure, I had to yeah. be, man, him was really good friends. You know, me and Fedor was friends. Dang. You know, Dan Henderson, we was friends. When the check's on the line. It's like it's it's, it's, it's my job. Like I, I knew that Pride was gonna put me against Kevin around yeah. We was the only two black dudes in Japan fighting like at that time. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. we we knew it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And me and Chuck, we wasn't really friends, but we was cool. I knew me and Chuck, we before before I fought him, we had got cool because we was in a tournament. Yeah. And, I, and I thought following him the first time we was cool, then I had to fight him again. So sometimes it, it happens, but it sucks when you, yeah. when you have to fight your friend. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't had to experience that. Hopefully I don't have to experience that. I ain't got too many friends in the UFC right now. Anyway, like that, in my division, at least, you know, so yeah, I'm chilling. Yeah. Before, before we let you go, I want to know, know your top three favorite fighters of all time. Of all time? Of all time. And then we'll let you go, but we got to know that first. You got to keep it raw, rugged, and real. You got to keep it raw. Yeah. You got to keep, keep it real. Yeah. That's what we are. We don't don't play with us. He lean now. He ready to fight. He ain't fighting. Don't play with <laughs> yeah, me. You lie. You know I ain't fighting. <laughs> if you lie. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I ain't fighting this young ass boy. <laughs> nah, I think you, I think you would smash. Man, he kicked dude in the face and broke his whole face. <laughs> and his elbow was broken. Yeah. His arm was broke. How did dude fight with one arm? I, I don't even Dog, know. Dog. I ain't going to. I ain't going to. Let's, let's take it to the top three. It, I ain't going to make your head go like that. I feel bad. Oh, you broke man. the dude in half. He's still, that's, that's crazy. Um, Top three. I would say... Demetrius Johnson, John Jones, and Silva. Anderson Silva? Yeah. Who's Demetrius Jones? Demetrius Johnson. Mighty Mouse. Mighty Mouse. Oh, Mighty Mouse. Mouse. Yeah, Yeah. I know Mighty Mouse. He got traded. The first ever trade. They they, they traded him for Ben Askren, and then Ben Askren got smoked by Jake Paul. Yeah. Ben Askren, a good wrestler, but he got smoked. I think Mighty Mouse um, was... So like so underrated like they yeah you know did you, he didn't sell he didn't sell pay per views so Dana don't care I, but, yeah but yeah he didn't sell pay per view but why why didn't he sell pay per view why he's a good fighter I, I don't understand it either yeah, like because Thomas, he's such a great fighter like he's so t- it's funny I just you know what I kind of feel like I give that aura off too but he's such a good fighter like he's so technical but he's just like you know like he's easy easy to forget you know what I mean like. Like, he's just yeah, not loud. Yeah, he's not loud. He's are like, you, you know, are, you, are you starting to? See nah, you? yeah, I mean, you see. Mm. I, I, you know, I mean, I just. You know what put me on the map? Not, not my fighting skills. Bruh, I, I hear it all the time. You know hear it all the time. Not I, my fighting skills. I just, it's just not me. I just, you know what I mean? It's just not me. I feel you. You know, you can't fake it. Exactly. Cut a fans. Reminds, reminds me of like Bouchesha. Like a, 
13, 14 time world champion, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, one of the best to ever do, but he a samurai. He ain't never gonna talk bad about anybody. He respectful, but when it comes to Jiu Jitsu, he will smash everybody. You know, now he's in one, obviously smoking and he's undefeated, but the dude won't say anything bad about anybody. What, yeah. What, think about it, what, what about GSP? I don't think he was like- No, nah, he didn't talk nah, about it. But he, he's like a legend. But like, I, how, I feel how, how like, you know, I feel like- He did uh, at karate. Canadian, not nah, Canadian. He had a whole, yeah, he, he had a whole country. He good at karate yeah. and all yeah. Canada like him. Yeah, I it's the that. U.S., bro. Like, yeah. you know, we we glorify people that talk noise, you know, and right. showboat and like, you know, what I mean, like run their mouth. And that's what that's what everybody wants to see. And granted, like, it's entertaining. Like, mm-hmm. I don't have anything against people that do it. Like, mm-hmm. just do it legit. If that's you, if that's your get down, then then be it. You yeah. know what I mean? But yeah. for me, but at least like, you're you. Yeah, at like I'm you. me. I'm gonna be right. me. Like. Mm-hmm. Like if somebody makes me mad, like talk talks crap, like we could talk crap, but like I don't care. Like I, don't, I ain't got no problem with that. I, but I'm gonna say this too: the problem with the UFC is like they they got people wearing uniforms and stuff too. Yeah. So you, you can't even look. You can't even look different. Anymore. Yeah, everybody's it's a, it's a unique it's a unique era. It's not the same era you came yeah. up in. You know, yeah, people I aren't really people like aren't that. walking in and yeah. having this aura of the sponsors and the yeah. feeling and the shirts and the banners. You know, it's just a different vibe. Yeah, you, you remember Chuck used to wear those shorts with the icicles on. Oh, yeah. shit. Tito with the yeah. flames. Yeah, you know Tito was a flamer, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that originality is yeah. out. I can kind of see the uniform thing though, because like they're trying mm-hmm. to make it more like sports, like you know. Other, yeah. every, if you look at other every other team sport, like that's that's what they do. They all have but their own uniform. Is but it, we're not a team. team is it exactly. A team we're not like, a team. Look sport. at boxing. They, you know, yeah. they don't make everybody wear the same. They, you, exactly. In boxing, you ain't got to wear the same gloves no more. No. And they got the craziest shorts. Yep. Craziest yeah. shorts. Yeah. yeah. I think I think the UFC dropping the ball on that. I think if you're gonna if you're gonna have if you're gonna have like a a, a title sponsor, you want to call it what they doing. Just make the fighters put it on their shorts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know the details of it, but it's the same concept that Francis and Ganyu wanted that that crypto deal. And, you know, he couldn't get it because the UFC was working on their own crypto deal right. and he lost out on millions. And that's one of the reasons why he wanted to step away, I guess, and do right. his own thing. I mean, it's hard, though. Dana obviously put together this championship fighting series that is now looked at around the world as an elite sport. You guys aren't like backyard brawlers anymore. You're looked at as pro athletes. So at one hand... Yeah, you don't get to wear the shorts you want. On the other hand, you're considered a pro athlete. It's kind of the trade off you get you, now. Do you do 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 you you guys get benefits from wearing those those shorts and stuff though? Or you they, can't they, talk about it. They pay us. Oh, that's it. That's good. Yeah. A little something. But like you know, if we got our own sponsorships, you know. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Because a lot of people made millions in the yeah. heyday of the UFC in the glory days. A lot of people made millions from sponsors. I mean, Anderson Silva's wearing Nike and Burger King. Yeah, like if I could have my own sponsorships on my shorts, I I'd, I'd be making. I'm gonna tell you the way it should be designed. You should you should be making way more endorsements and sponsors than you than your purse. Exactly. You should. That's the way it should be. And and it's like mm-hmm. it's not there for that. <laughs> Demand it. Hey, I want to see you get that belt. You know what I'm saying? Keep keep killing it. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, we win some, we lose some, but you know what I'm saying? We already winners as soon as we step inside that octagon. You know what I'm saying? Don't worry. Yeah, don't focus on your on your last. You know, learn something from it and get that weight together. Thank you, yeah. thank you for yeah. joining. Amazing, <laughs> Hell yeah. amazing, and and one of the best fights of the year. I, I, I kid you not, one of the best fights Very of the year. Bro. So much respect. What it takes to do that to break a dude's arm, break a dude's face, still <laughs> go and then take it. I mean, unbelievable. Yeah, yeah man, you it's... broke your foot off in a hooker's ass. <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> Yo, this is Rampage Jackson and my brother Bear, and thank you all for joining, and thank Jalen Hunter for uh, God damn it, <laughs> Tina Turner. <laughs> Don't don't take as many punches. I've been fighting for twenty years, motherfucker. <laughs> might have to use that. <laughs> might have to just use that. Yeah. We might have to just use that. Dog. Keep it authentic. Yo, keep it running. Keep that in the edit. <laughs> Yo, fade on sight. It's a wrap. We're here with Jalen Turner. Are you related to Tina? Tina Turner. <laughs> We're here with Jalen Turner and my brother Bear. Thank y'all for tuning in. I hope y'all enjoy the show. Fade on sight. We're gonna keep. Bringing some hardcore shit to y'all, and um, hopefully, hopefully nobody get. I didn't. 